last time you and I spoke, uh, we were talking more about the possibility, anyway, of, of I believe it was a medical show you were talking about. Yeah, look, I've been working on um, I've been working on a, a couple of different ideas. One of which was uh, they're all kind of character-based ideas. One of which, I mean, but it's it's the it's the world in which we put these characters really in it. A couple of ideas. That have come and gone, and one idea in particular that we were fond of, which had a medical aspect, mm-hmm. um, is in the direction that we're going to go. We've only just recently realized that uh, it's a little sprawling for what we want. You know, we want to we want to contain it. Things writing a, writing a show for TV is you know creating a show for television is um, it's difficult. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's a, it's a show that will, in, in foresight, hopefully be successful. It's a difficult task. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one thing to write, write some cool characters. It's another thing to write a cool first act of a movie. It's another, there's lots of other, th- other things that are actually you know, easier to do, but actually writing a show that is going to run autonomously in some in, in some areas and, and, and sort of and putting a set of rules together that, that will keep that will keep a show running week to week and keep audiences tuned in and, you know, all the things that are required to make make a show exciting. Mm-hmm. It's a tricky, it's, it's a big thing to ask. And so, um, but we're very, very close and I've got, an, I've got an excellent writer I'm working with, Simon Mirren. Who is, um, I know that name, but why do I know that name? Well, you know, put in a Mirren because of Helen Mirren. Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay. He's, uh, of which he is, he's, a ne- he's a nephew, and he's, um, he's also a co-executive producer and head writer on Criminal Minds, uh, Criminal Minds TV show. Right. And um, he's fantastic. He's really, really good. He's a co-creator of the show Spooks. Um, That's the MI6 show, right? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's done a lot of great stuff. And so he's uh, he's at the helm of this thing I'm, I'm, I'm working on. And we're creating this together. And so, you know, we're working on something. We're working on a variation of that theme at the moment. And um, we're hoping that we can um, pull something through to CBS in time, which is in the next sort of day or so now. We could finish up our revisions and get the go ahead to, to, to work on a pilot officially to right. for January. But look, all of that being said, I'm on a holding deal with CBS, and um, if they're not, if they don't want or think that the next idea is appropriate for for their network, then they're going to start firing their pilots at me. Oh, and see what you might be interested in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess their 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 motivation at the moment is to get me on TV, right? Which is cool, and uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to working though. I'm looking forward to getting back into something because it's been a while. Oh yeah. You know, and I mean, I'm wondering, you know, did the following that you gained, because obviously you gained quite a following because of Moonlight. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, beforehand, but you know what I'm talking about. That's sort yeah. of that real fever for you. Absolutely. You know, uh, has that helped your career, your place in Hollywood? I'm always curious what impact that has, besides the fact you get a lot of people going crazy for you. I'm wondering what impact something like that has. It's a little early to tell. Uh, I think it's a little easy to tell whether it's helped my career in Hollywood. I mean, that is, you know, I mean, if I, if I, if I, when I finally get a lead in a feature in Hollywood, you know, if all my fans, if I have, if my fan base sort of, you know, if box office works and people come and sit in a movie theater and pay for tickets to watch me in a movie, right. you know, and I can actually lead a movie and make money for a studio. I mean, that's when that can help you yeah. in Hollywood. I mean, it, it's, lo- it's lovely to have the fans I've got. I mean, I'm extremely grateful for my fan base and for the support that, I, that I'm surrounded by. So don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong with that. It's, mm-hmm. uh, but, but has it helped me in Hollywood? Um, not yet. Just a fanboy question. Have they had any conversation at all about bringing back Moonlight only because I only ask because you got Twilight coming out in the theaters, which has got tremendous buzz. you got True Blood, which has become a big hit for HBO. Yeah. And the show that replaced Moonlight is already canceled. Yeah. 
I don't know the answer to that, Ed. I think that there were discussions with Joel Silver and uh, the powers that be. You've got to remember Joel owns the show. Oh, he owns it, CBS, so Warner, well, Warner's owns it too, I guess, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, they're, they're the, you know, and so, uh, you know, I know there were discussions sort of seven or eight months ago when they canned it, whatever yeah. it was, about taking it to other networks, smaller networks, and uh, nothing ever eventuated. So I think at this stage it would be, yeah. I think it would be ambitious to think it was coming back simply because of the time that's passed. Well, I agree with you. I mean, it would seem unlikely at best. It would seem unlikely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. But, uh, hmm. yeah, it's a shame we didn't get that just second season, just at least a... Well, I just got to wonder if the network is kicking itself at all, just because, like I said, they've already canceled the show that replaced it, and all this other vampire stuff is going on around it. You know, just, just, well, just you to never know, man. I mean, we yeah. just never second guess these people, and it's like they always sort of. It always seems like they they know what they're doing, but I don't know. I, I wish they didn't cancel it. Like I wish we we could have kept going. And yeah. I feel like we got a rough trot. Like I feel like we had we lost five episodes to the strike, and we still came back and won the People's Choice Award. And right. We you know we all worked so hard. And, the show, we, I feel like we recovered after that. I mean, we weren't, we, we were doing okay numbers and they were consistent and we always won the demographic and it's like, well, let us go, man. Let us, give us another nine episodes at least to show us, show you what we can, right. you know, we had some great stories lined up. But anyway. Thank you. It is what it is. Why? Yeah, what do you, when you're choosing a role, you know, from the beginning of your career to where you are now, I mean, and, and working the current thing, I'm just curious, what is it that draws you in? I mean, obviously a good script will draw you in, but in terms of, what are the elements that you look for, if anything? Uh, my, the first question I ask myself is, can I shine in this role? Do I have, do I have a comprehensive understanding of this character? Do I also have an inherent instinctual, from the first read, of the script is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, understanding of how I'm going to play this character. Does this character live within me already on some level? Um, you know, am I going to be able to authentically bring honesty, integrity, and love to this character, you know, and defend this character right. with all my might? And so, um, and that's our job as actors. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's what we think the character steps off the page. And sometimes ca other characters need, some characters need more work than others. For me, when characters are just here and I know without even, without thinking, without on a cerebral level, I don't need to involve, like, intellect or intellectual work or property to my work in a character because it's just there instinctively straight away. But others, I have to sit down and do all my and do all my work or write all my techniques out or do, you know, but the, the, the character is the most important thing and then the story is, is not secondary, but the story is what I, I sort of consider next and if it's a really bad story, then I'm like, well, can we fix the story? Right. Because it's not, you know, I mean, you get to a point where it's like... <clears throat> You know, do you, do you like a character? I mean, your characters don't all have to be heroes, do they? I mean, can they have the darker edge or the darker side? Or no, absolutely. Look, I kind of, I must say, I, I prefer to play the anti-hero or the flawed character, you know, because there's more to work with and there's, I don't know, there's, it brings me closer to reality and it's kind of, I just enjoy it. I find that there's more at stake and, and um, there's more to work with, you know. It's, uh, yeah, I think I sort of have played more flawed characters than real heroes anyway. Right. I think, I think I'm yet to play a full-on just hero. Well, they're more interesting anyway, aren't they? Sure, they are more interesting. They are more interesting, and I feel that, you know, I feel that I relate to those characters.